Fortnite Battle Royale. The greatest gaming phenomenon to ever sweep the entire globe. I've played it. You've played it. All your friends played it. If someone owns anything that runs video games nowadays, they've played it. If someone never played video games before Fortnite, they've played it. From the seven-year-old kindergartner to the middle school nerd, the high school star quarterback, the college dorm dwellers, hardworking adults to professional streamers to seasoned esports competitors, most everyone with internet access has some knowledge of Fortnite. From humble and buggy beginnings to its global explosion and multi-million dollar competitive prize pool, Fortnite has done the impossible. It's estimated for that almost its entire lifespan, Fortnite has had at least 2-3 to three million concurrent players at any given time, and has stayed relevant and in the limelight for that entire duration as well. It is by far the most popular video game ever released, and while it may be against other gamers' opinions, but judging by the numbers, the most addictive and entertaining video game ever created. But that isn't exactly what we're here to talk about. We're not here to discuss that Fortnite is a one-of-a-kind success. We're here to talk about why. What makes this game tick? What makes it so enticing to players consciously and subliminally? Get ready for some nostalgia, some insight, and some things you may not have ever noticed about the most popular game ever created. What up, it's Prime Pete. I hope you enjoyed that overly dramatic intro. To start, I'll address the fairly common knowledge that Fortnite also has a PvE counterpart called Save the World, where you build a base, unlock guns and characters, and defend yourself and your base from an onslaught of zombies. What most people don't know is that this Fortnite was actually developed and released in 2012. The concept of the game objectively wasn't that bad. The idea of being able to build your defenses as you see fit and freely explore and farm out the areas you were defending for resources and materials was actually kind of fun. But since the genre was very niche, it didn't see that much of an explosion. Now we fast forward seven years. Seeing as the game's PvE mode wasn't doing too well, but the ideas and concepts were very foundationally stable, Epic decided to give PvP a try. But turning a Builder Looter Shooter PvE title into a PvP title isn't the easiest task, as you might expect. When creating a PvP experience, you have to consider what effect the core mechanics will have on the session. In the case of Fortnite, the concept of building was one that a PvP title had not really seen, unless you count playing Minecraft servers, which honestly barely counts. Epic couldn't do something like COD with a small arena and fast-paced gameplay because they would surely lose to whoever was developing Call of Duty that year, and it would be hard for them to stay relevant. They couldn't do something more like Gears of of War, a popular third-person shooter, because at that point they'd just be another third-person shooter, which quite frankly no one was asking for at that point in time. But one genre was on the rise and in high demand. Epic Games found themselves in the perfect place at the perfect time. In 2017, the battle royale genre hadn't quite blown up yet, but at the time, a game called Player Unknown's Battlegrounds was on the rise for being the first of its kind. It was a game created by thinking outside the box, and with inspiration from games like H1Z1 and even, yes, the Minecraft survival games. Its developers devised a brand new game concept where 100 players jump onto a giant map and loot and survive in a constantly diminishing save zone until the last remaining players are forced to fight to see who is the last one standing. Out of 100 players, only one is very victorious. But because of the massive map, potential for strategy, and the exhilarating feeling of winning a game being the only one standing at the end, the genre started to slowly gain traction. However, the game was still pretty niche, and although big streamers were playing it on occasion, the genre hadn't quite blown up yet. That is, until Epic Games saw the dollar signs. In trying to adapt a PvE builder looter shooter to a PvP title, your core gameplay arguably has to be somewhat similar so it stays true to the original mechanics. But since playing on small maps with buildings and a third-person camera would definitely be overshadowed by other titles, something else needed to be done to make this effort worthwhile. But there is one genre that involves a lot of looting, a lot of shooting, and has a reasonable use for a third person camera, and has enough open space that building structures to assist you in fighting your opponents would not be too cramped, and that genre is none other than Battle Royale. This is reason number one that Fortnite succeeded. They jumped on the Battle Royale train early. They didn't do what everyone else was already doing, rather they hopped on a new rising trend at a perfect time, and little did they know, the biggest names in gaming would soon also hop on this bandwagon due to the sheer popularity Fortnite would amass. Another very useful factor that aided in Fortnite's early attention was one I found in another YouTube video by the YouTuber with the name of Jiggins. In his video, he stated that there were no viable battle royale options on console at the time other than Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, which was not even viable in the first place because the game performed so poorly on console, it was too painful to even boot up in the first place. Fortnite was the first battle royale title that actually performed well on console, making it the 
only but best option when it came to playing Battle Royale on console. The reason Battle Royale ended up being such an addictive and entertaining genre in the first place is actually pretty interesting, and I think it goes past the surface reasons alone, the main of which is once you die, you instantly want to hop into another game. Before the Gulag from Warzone, Battle Royale was a one chance game. If you died or were finished off, that was it you were toast. The psychology of Battle Royale is actually very interesting and somewhat confusing because it honestly seems like it shouldn't work, but it does. If someone dies and has to start from scratch again enough times, it should be getting very annoying. But for some reason, Fortnite players just keep continually jumping off the battle bus again and again. But why? Being a one chance game and only having one winner, Fortnite's high risk, high reward gameplay had great rewards for winning engagement, like being able to loot an entire player's collection of items they spent the entire game accumulating, but a brutal punishment for losing one by forcing you to start again from scratch in another game. But the main reason Battle Royale works when it really seems like it shouldn't is because human beings, and more specifically human beings that are more competitive, are driven by our ego, our self-image if you will. In a game like Fortnite, where it is a giant free-for-all with teams only getting as large as four people, you have a huge likelihood of losing the game, and a low chance of winning. Even with a four-man team, your odds are puny 4% compared to the 1% of playing solos. But funny enough, the more gamers lost in Fortnite, the more they were driven to try again. Placing low, like in 50th to 100th place, has most players saying, I can do better than that, and placing high like in 30th to even 2nd place has players saying, I was so close and I can definitely win if I played the game slightly differently, so let me try again. Once they worked their way up to that win and truly felt the high of being the last person standing out of 100, they had learned the basic mechanics of the game and found the game highly entertaining, and this was enough to keep them playing after their first win. You know a game is addictive and engaging with a concept it was based around, Battle Royale, at its core, is a breeding ground for addiction already, by taking advantage of a gamer's ego and rationalization of every loss saying I could do better in the next game. That leads me into my next point about why Battle Royale is such an entertaining and addictive genre. The amount of pure freedom the game allows its players. Unlike other shooters, Battle Royale has so much freedom of choice, it was absolutely staggering. You have freedom to do basically whatever you want on the island, and it was up to you how you wanted to win. Even in its earliest state, Fortnite still allows you to pick where you want to land, where you move to as long as it was inside the closing zone, what fights you took, what materials you farmed, what loadout you picked, the list goes on and on. Basically, the game rewarded so many playstyles and choices that literally anybody could win if they could outsmart or outplay the 99 other players in the match. We've all seen the sweaty tryhard players win a match, but we've also seen the bush camper and the cherry picker win games as well. From start to finish, Battle Royale on a giant map allows you to operate and strategize in your own unique way, and tweak your strategy after every game, for endless possibilities of how the game plays out until the last team is standing. What makes this amount of freedom different from games like Minecraft or Ark Survival Evolved is that eventually, you were guided in towards players by a closing circle, and although your resource gathering, looting, and building all resemble that of class classic survival games, your ultimate goal is to eliminate everyone else until you're the last one standing, then you subsequently restart and do it again. Because games are relatively short and constantly filled with movement and action, it won't get stale or lonely like a survival game would eventually get to most players. With all of this conversation about freedom of choice and the game resetting completely after every match, this brings up the next very important concept that makes Fortnite as addictive and entertaining as it is, and this is the fact that no player will ever enter a match with a competitive advantage other than their skill level above other players. Your choices and skills determine every outcome, not level ups or grinding. Everyone starts every single match equal in every single way, and it's up to your skill level and decision making, and a bit of luck or RNG, to win the game. See, what turns players away from other games, for a radical example like Destiny 2, is the sheer amount of grinding and leveling you have to do in order to compete with most good players. Another good example is Call of Duty. Especially in modern CODs, most guns have over 40 levels, and in order to unlock the most desirable attachments, you have to grind out every single weapon to gain a competitive edge over other players. What I'm trying to say is that in other games, your time investment can give you a massive advantage over other players, because it allows you to acquire gear and items that give you the edge. But in a game like Fortnite, there is no grind to scare players away at all. Every game, you start the exact same as everyone else, and only your choices within that match and what weapons, items, and materials you acquire dictate your performance. Starting a level ground every single match means that it's up to you to learn the game and figure out what works the best for you in regards to strategy and execution of your game plan. There is no intimidating time investment required to give you a chance at victory. Anyone and everyone can install the game and hop right in with nothing else required. It's usually these types of games that blow up in popularity, games that don't require any grinding and place 
everyone in the same playing field. Games like Fortnite, Valorant, CSGO, and Overwatch, just to name a few. The fact that everyone starts with the same exact resources is enough to hook even the most casual player. The only factor that determines your performance is your skill level. I'm sure that by sticking around to this point, you're wondering when I'm going to mention the game's most prominent mechanic. The mechanic that, without it, the game would have never stood the test of time or stood out at all. Welcome to the first PvP looter shooter with building, an innovative and intuitive mechanic that not only helps you reach roofs and mountains, but helps you create cover and structures to give you a competitive advantage in an encounter with another player. From its humble beginnings of placing a few structures in a few seconds, to building the Eiffel Tower in under a second, building has always been the defining factor when it comes to creating the massive skill gap that Fortnite has. It is also the reason Fortnite has any legs to stand on whatsoever. Without it, the game becomes a third person battle royale looter shooter with disappointing and aggravating RNG hit detection and no redeeming reason to play it, but this one addition to the game created the greatest phenomenon gaming has ever seen. Players can choose between four different structures to build, a wall, ramp, floor, and cone. Using these four structures, players can create cover and maneuver around environments when fighting or trying to reach places that would otherwise be unreachable. Another key concept of Fortnite's building is editing, where players can change the shape of a pre-existing structure to create playmaking opportunities, reveal sight lines, and in recent years, as the building skill ceiling ever increases, maneuver through an area without taking any damage, or technically named edit coursing. With this simple yet genius system of building and being able to change the shape of what you've built, Fortnite allows the player to fully create and manipulate their own environments when they are in combat with another player who can also do the same thing. Fully understanding how to use this mechanic is crucial to winning the game and staying alive. Now that's all well and good, but why does one mechanic single-handedly save the game from being boring, dull, and irritatingly unpredictable? Well my friends, the answer is one you can probably predict. It creates the largest skill gap out of any mechanic in the game, and it also saves the game from being an RNG dictated rage fest. Imagine you're in an open field, just running along and minding your own business. You've got loot, decent materials farmed and you're ready to take another engagement. Suddenly, someone on a hill opens fire on you and you take one hit of damage from their rifle. Knowing Fortnite, what do you most likely immediately do next? If you guessed build cover, yes, you're correct. Congrats. Now, what will the player who fired the first shot likely do? Well, they'll either move in slightly closer and then build cover to avoid being shot, they will build where they are, or they will continue pressuring the opposing player's newly built structure. The player who built the first structure has done something that is very essential to the game's core mechanics and that is ensuring that the fight isn't solely determined by RNG and luck. Let me explain. Let's rewind and imagine now that building wasn't a present mechanic in Fortnite. The player that opened fire surely has a very high chance that they will secure the elimination because they have fired the first shot. Since the player taking fire has nowhere to hide and not enough time to heal, they will almost surely die. The only thing they would be able to do is return fire and hope that their bloom is luckier and the opponent dies first. This type of gameplay isn't only like a lottery at all times, it also doesn't exactly involve much skill either. This version of Fortnite is one that many players would not enjoy playing, and it would surely be an unpopular choice. Building does something very interesting. It takes situations that would otherwise be overwhelmingly advantageous to one party, and allows an opportunity for the disadvantaged player to gain some sort of a chance against the player that fired first. Since the distance between two players will surely close eventually, a build fight will ensue, and since shotgun shots are way less RNG based than bloom based weapons, and the winner of a shotgun fight is ultimately determined by who has the superior aim, building ensures that each fight is interesting, and each fight can be won regardless of who fired the first bullet. <sighs> that was a lot to cover. I'm going to break this series into multiple parts so I can cover information in a reasonable amount and still get you guys videos in the process. If you want to see parts 2, 3, and 4, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe because this video took forever to make. But until part 2, take it easy.